Hey guys, it is Sophia the Shadow Hunter, and today I'm doing my book review on the Washington Bible by Alan Levy. I really enjoyed this book. I give, I'm gonna give this book on Goodreads a five out of five stars. I really enjoyed it. I should have finished it three days earlier, but it's been a crazy week for me. Finally finished it. I was gonna stay up late and finish it. Um, two nights ago, I tried to, I couldn't do it, and so I just got up and not re finished this yesterday, early morning day, and I really enjoyed it. This, I thought, I was thinking this was going to be kind of like a Weisenthal biography. It kind of was, however, now I really want to read his real book, because this is written about Alan Levy, and it is about his hunt to find the Nazi hunters. Um, a little bit. It did not go into depth about his time in the concentration camps, although he was in several of them. He lost most of his family except for his wife. And it was a very sad story. At the end it got really interesting when he was trying to find the Nazis they still had not yet to find. And one of those was the Angel of Death who died before they could find him. He had so many different aliases. And they just could not, Simon could not believe that he was dead. And so about 10 years after he died, they finally did a, they did a test, a blood match between his son and him. And they were 99% sure that it was his, so he rested his case about him being gone. So he captured and put people on life sentence for about 150 Nazis. Uh, um, excuse me, at the end of the book, he talked about Eli Wilde, who wrote Night, Dawn, Night, Day, and I think, is it Dawn? No, it's not Dawn. Anyhow, um, they got in a bit of a, they were not friends to say the least, they were not really nice, he was not nice to Simon, and that's because even though um, Weisenthal was Jewish and he was Polish and he lost most of his family to the to the Holocaust War, to into the Nazis, and to these concentration camps that he was trying to give people closure and people to pay for what they'd done. Because he did not want to make it all about the Jews, that's why they disagreed. Because Simon wanted everyone who had lost, you know, there are some other, and this is true, and I, as a lover of history and reading lots of Holocaust books, I have no, I know myself, there are other people groups that were persecuted and treated terribly and it wasn't just Jewish people. It was Jehovah's Witnesses, it was Gypsies, it was people with learning disabilities, it was communist, it was, you know, Catholic priests. Anybody who disagreed with them or thought were going to cause a problem journey, they got rid of. And so when, um, after they made the, like, the Jewish council, in D.C., um, it was all fed up with Jewish people, and so Simon wanted the president saying, "Can we add a gypsy to this?" Because it was like he said, "I'll take, I'll give away my seat for a gypsy to take my place," and I thought that was so amazing, and I feel so bad that he was kind of bullied slash just he, you know. Because he he was thinking about everyone that was hurt, not just his race, which I think is very good because for people like him, all the pain he went through, all the suffering, and he came out of it and he did good to help people. It is amazing that he wasn't blinded by the fact, yes, and to be honest, yes, there was more Jews killed than any other race, I believe, during the Holocaust, during the Nazi occupation in Germany and in Europe. But that doesn't mean that all the other millions of people that died doesn't need to doesn't need to be able to talk about it. Everyone who went through that should be able to talk about it if they want to. And for so long people did it until some people did. And I'm so glad those people did and I know how hard it must be for the people to have spoken out, but thanks but it was a blessing they did so we can learn from them. One thing I love about learning about history is um when Simon was a teacher, he was there were some talks that he was talking with one of his students. And he was talking about, you know, we can you know, learning, you know, from history. And they said, you know, it's weird that we can learn from history because we learn by other people making mistakes. It's so 
it's not like we're gonna go back and we'll read the history. We're not gonna go repeat it, so because lots of time we do. But even though when people mistake, we still have good and negative things that we uh, unfortunately learn from other people and from history. So I want to read one of my favorite quotes at the end of this at the end of this book that I thought was this, this was very I think beautiful and Sally it's true. So this is written by. President Kurt Waldheim on July 26, 1990, translated from Czech. It says, all too often in part of this world, fear of one lies gives birth to another lie, and the foolish hope that by protecting ourselves from the first lie, we will be protected from lies in general. But a lie can never protect us from a lie. Those who justify his falsify history do not protect the freedom of a nation, but rather constitute a threat to it. The idea that a person can rewrite his autobiography in one of the traditional South deceptions of Central Europe, trying to do that means hurting oneself and one's fellow countrymen. When in truth is not given complete freedom, freedom is not complete. I think that is a beautiful, beautiful line. It's also sad and true. Another line I want to read, say from, can't remember who wrote it, was when when a person saves one man, he saves the world entire. Oh, let me find out who that who wrote that by. And when I read that. Not that one, but the other one. It really gave me chills. Um, it is so true. When people don't have, besides not having the ability to learn and not knowing the truth, to be a, the ability to have the truth is an amazing gift. And we don't have it, we lose our freedom. We live our, we lose our ideas to be able to learn new things and to promote new ideas and to learn to our better of ourselves. And during the Holocaust and during different wars, the truth is the truth is not being completely portrayed. It is mixed up in a lot of time. It isn't true. And because of those false truths, those half truths that were trying to protect people by lying end up hurting the person more because they don't have all the facts to make up their own decisions. And that is when we have people who just go and follow the next bit of great leader who they think is going to save the world. Obviously, Hitler at the time they thought he was Germany's savior. And if people don't have the whole truth, lots of people can get hurt. The truth is needed so that people can learn and make their own ideas of things in society and not just believe the first thing they hear. Um. So I highly recommend those books for all of you guys, Holocaust enthusiasts or history buffs who would want to read this. This book was very heavy, but it was very important and I really did enjoy it. It was very intriguing. It felt a little sluggish at some points, but I really enjoyed it and I highly recommend it. If you guys have read this book, please let me know in the comments down below. If you haven't, go subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys next time in our video. Goodbye.